So hi everybody, my name is Prachi Singh. I am a chartered accountant by profession, uh, but by passion, I love butterflies. Uh, I call myself a lepidopterist and I have been raising butterflies for the past 17 years now. 17 years, that's quite a lot. I think. <laughs> so if you'd like to know more about, uh, you know, the kind of impact butterflies have on our ecosystem, uh, would you like to share your insights? So I think butterflies, the most important role of a butterfly is um, to pollinate plants. And only when the plants uh, have pollination do they grow seeds and that's how the plants are grown. Uh, I read somewhere that, you know, if the butterflies and bees uh, become extinct, within two to three years, a human will also not survive. So that's the kind of a role that butterflies really have. My goodness. Okay, so that's some food for thought for us to, you know, actually buckle up. So, um, we'd like to know more, more about your journey, you know, from a little girl uh, that used to chase butterflies to being a, uh, you know, a conservationist. Uh, could you please uh, just, uh, you know, go ahead and describe all the uh, levels of your journey as such? Absolutely. So, Mansi, as you said, you know, as a child, we all love butterflies. We run after them. We look for the vibrant colors that attract me. And that's, I think, where I started. I remember I was in fourth or fifth standard. That's the first time when I read about a butterfly life cycle. And I wanted to really explore it. That's when I bought the first, I uh, saw a caterpillar roaming in my garden. That's when I got it home, saw the entire cycle. I think I continued researching or maybe experimenting or looking for butterflies for a very long time. And then I started realizing I used to bring home uh, my friends, my family and show the entire life cycle to them. And that's when I realized that, you know, though we study about them, them in books, we tend to forget. So I was surprised when, you know, even my one of my teachers said, oh, the butterfly comes from out of a pupa and from a caterpillar, an egg. She had forgotten. I thought that I have to educate the world. That's when I started going to NGOs schools and started talking about very basic things about butterflies and how they themselves at their home or at school can really help towards conservation and um, save some um, species and all. Amazing, amazing. I see that that's a fantastic backdrop that you have out there. Is that your own garden? Yeah, yeah. I'm right now sitting in my garden. I think over the weekend, that's the place that you will always find me in. We have um, uh, a lot of, we have about 130 or 140 pots, uh, potted plants in our garden. And yeah, so we include a lot of these as butterfly host and nectar plants where I can attract more and more butterflies to my ga own garden. Lovely. That, that sounds like a garden of dreams, I must say. <laughs> okay, so what is the kind of, uh, you know, the optimal environment that one requires to uh, you know enable these butterflies to grow and blossom and sort of uh, you know be healthy yeah so i think you know mansi uh, a lot of people that i meet and a lot of schools that i go to they all often mention that we would want to visit your home whenever they come they like the environment they find it very beautiful but they say oh, i mean we also have similar plants at home why don't we have butterflies i mean it's they probably expect something very different or unique or they'll find some hybrid exotic plants that probably they don't have. And I tell them one very simple thing that you have to have more of native plants, more of flowering plants. And at the same time, you need to know which plants to grow. For example, when they looked at the curry plant in my garden, they said curry plant everybody has. We've never seen a caterpillar or a butterfly around. And I said, do you add pesticide? And they said, of course. I said, why would a uh, butterfly come? And even the caterpillars die of the um, pesticide, insecticide. So it's important to know um, which kind of plants. Like, for example, uh, every butterfly has its own plant on which it lays eggs. So plants like lemon, orange, uh, bale patra, uh, then you have curry, ashok. These are few plants where, which are the host for few of the species of butterflies commonly found. So you can grow them in your garden. Add, do not add any pesticide. And then flowers are very important. Try to have variety of flowers. And 
try to have different sizes of flowers. So butterflies, uh, there's this family of butterfly called blues. They're very, very small. So you, if you have a big flower like hibiscus, they would never come and visit your garden. So have a combination of those. And one more important element here is have compound flowers. Now compound flowers mean flowers which have florets, for example, marigold. It's not one flower. It is a combination of multiple flowers. Yeah, so, so include these in your garden. You shouldn't be using pesticides. What else should be used to actually keep the other pests away? How can we go about uh, then helping the plants grow and not get attacked by other pests? Yeah. So that's a very interesting question, Mansi, and um, you'll be surprised to know that. Uh, the other day, I bought a flowering plant that's called Exora. And uh, uh, even before the buds came, arrived, uh, there were so many insects around it. And we were also very worried. And my mom was looking for ways to get rid of uh, them without even telling me. So she knew that I'm not going to allow her to use any pesticide. Uh, what I did, I said, um, I can see the pest around. I'll bring in a caterpillar of a ladybird. So you remember that red color ladybird uh, that yeah, we have ladybug also. Yeah. So I'd seen those cat caterpillars in my garden. I just brought one caterpillar, placed it there, and it ate all the pests. Now, I, I am sure that, you know, you won't be able to find the caterpillars around. It's not that easy, but let me tell you, nature has its own way to manage and tackle. So if you leave the plant there, uh, you might see black color caterpillars around eating those pests. So let it, um, I mean, the nature will have a way around. Don't worry, just let it be. Um, I think if you leave your garden undisturbed is when you'll benefit a lot of, out of it. So let it be that way. Then. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who is also sort of, trying to grow her own little garden but I was so obsessed with uh, you know so many things uh, that are there on the internet and there's so many uh, tricks and tips and chemicals and this and that that you know I used to go ahead and keep on purchasing and helping my plants to help my plants grow so the intention was that but uh, eventually you know I would see see that some of the other plants kept dying so that yeah. uh, gives me the answer that you know let them just be <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, Mansi, when I wake up and, you know, I see a leaf eaten in my garden, one morning I wake up and see that, yeah. I'm so excited that there is a caterpillar around. So I see it from a different lens, maybe that, and then I know that, you know, this plant I have given, or probably this is taken by a butterfly, it's her home, and I just enjoy that moment, and it, the, uh, you know, the leaf being eaten doesn't uh, disturb me anymore now. Exactly. This different perspective is definitely going to help a lot of viewers out there. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, now that you're sitting in your garden, I'd love to take a tour. <laughs> Would you like to give <laughs> absolutely. us a tour? Yeah, absolutely. Um, these plants that you see in my background are petunias. Um, okay. They are usually grown in winters and we've planted a lot of them. Now, uh, you know, you may place them at uh, together at one place because, you know, butterflies, when they drink nectar, they can't change the plant very quickly. So if you have petunia here, they would want to uh, visit a petunia. The next flower should be petunia. It oh. will take time to really change the flower. So if you right. place it separately, it will be a task for the butterfly to really look around. So okay. every season, we keep changing and including more flowers as per the season. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to include native flowers, native plants, because the exotic ones may look very beautiful, but they um, consume more water. Okay. So we have petunia here. Um, so I was saying um, you can include the common ones, like I gave you example, orange, lemon, ashok, and uh, madar and all. For example, I have one little leaf. Uh, here with me. This okay. is a leaf of a bryophyllium. Yeah. Now it's very easy to grow. All you have to do is just take one leaf and it will grow into little, uh, it will have little, uh, you know, plants on the side of the leaf. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what I do is when I visit my friends or, or when I go to school, I just pluck one leaf, give it to them and I say, well, play it, place it in your garden and they will crop up to become like uh, 10 more or 15 more plants wow. and you know you can also see a pupa here a pupa oh. shell 
it's okay. not a live pupa the butterfly has come out and that's okay. the reason i plucked it out um so you know uh, what i do is the butterfly will look for its own host plant will mm -hmm. lay eggs there the uh, caterpillar will eat the leaf of that plant and will stay there throughout its life and will um, you know uh, put itself into a shell like structure called pupa mm -hmm. and after a week from becoming a pupa the butterfly, butterfly will automatically come out and fly so uh, this is what happens in my garden every now and then different species laying eggs and becoming butterflies and i carefully watch them that's all what i do delightful um, it must be no <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so i am very excited every morning to look for new caterpillars in my garden and wait for them to become butterflies and probably capture some pictures if I'm, i if i get lucky okay so uh, how many kinds of uh, species uh, you sort of bred so far um i've had about 11 to 12 species in my garden um uh, but in delhi we have about 100 species so um, very far from really having the other species in my garden but it also it also depends on what kinds of plants you have um only those species will lay eggs um whose host plants are there in your garden so i'm yet to add more and more uh, nectar plants uh, sorry the host plants in my garden all right and in in the world i think there are about 17000 Yeah, the number is about fifteen thousand and above. Um, in India, we have about more than thirteen hundred species. So yeah, that's the count. That's great. Now, speaking of Delhi, um, India doesn't provide that kind of a, an environment for nature to thrive. I'd say um, polluted like anything. AQ levels are alarming. So how do you uh, think that you know one can actually, or for yourself, uh, your example, if you take? um has it been difficult uh, bringing up uh, this kind of a flourishing garden and what all uh, you know measures should one take to protect your garden from uh, the wrath of uh, nature i'd say <laughs> um i think manasi it's very easy to maintain a garden if you have native plants uh because native plants grow well in the environment so what are native plants uh for example um uh, you know all the plants which were it yeah, originally grown in india so uh, those plants will survive the heat those plants will survive the um, uh, the the harsh winters that we have in delhi so if you have more plants which are native automatically you have to spend less time uh, the other thing is do not flood your plants with too much of water um, you need to understand basics about uh, the flowers and all for example the petunia in my background do not need too much of water if mm -hmm. you give more water uh, probably the roots will die mm -hmm. will become decay so have basic knowledge about plants even the um, the nurseries that you visit when you buy any plant it's very it's a good idea to just ask the nursery guy uh, what are the precautions and they probably know it all <clears throat> that's one more thing the other thing probably i uh, believe is uh, you know we also need to spend more time in the garden so for example i have for you uh, certain seeds that i've taken what i do is every time before the spring is when the seeds will um, uh, be ready and then you know the uh, the flowers will become seeds so i spend a lot of time time in my garden collecting these seeds and if you otherwise if you don't collect they will fall on the ground or they fall and then you clean up these seeds will get wasted what i do is i collect seeds and you may get seeds of different flowers even for example marigold once the uh, flower the flower can be dried and been can be grown so you know rather than buying plants i believe you can grow and uh, share it with your friends and it's more much more cheaper to have so i collect the seeds and i want to probably preserve the seeds uh, seeds and use it for the next season what i do is i create this beautiful seed balls wow yeah it's in a shape of a butterfly, a butterfly yeah it's made of only uh, mud and a little paper mache and i place one seed inside it becomes uh -huh. a seed bomb uh -huh. and i gift it to i probably in fans make some fancy pouches uh, from my recycled clothes and all and just use this pouches and gift it to my friends 
Um, so lucky they are. <laughs> uh, yeah. So my mom has stitched them to me. Nice. So I just gift it to my friends. Or when I'm going to office or traveling anywhere, I just throw it out so that the rain will come and automatically they'll um, become plants and trees and more butterflies can lay their eggs. So I think these are few habits that one can um, do in their own garden. A lot of people ask me, no, our flowers never um, ha um, have seeds and all. But probably even before you realize the seeds have fallen or a lot of seeds can be carried away by uh, wind. So I think spend more time with that. Um, a lot of list of butterfly, host and nectar plants are there already on internet. I have this book that I've written uh, for children. Yeah, it's a children's book. And I'll tell you, it has a list of all the plants which are easily found in India, in Delhi, NCR could be India. So, you know, these are very basic plants that you can have in your garden. And um, as I said, you need to know which plant, how much to water, whether it needs sunlight. There are a few plants like these ones, they do not need the harsh sunlight. So I've put them in little in shade so that they can go for a longer time. Yeah. Nice. So I was going to ask you about Curie's Cocoa. That's how you know I got to know that you're also writing a book. And you've got a dedicated page on that to educating children. So I, I realized, Vansi, that you know children still have that curiosity in them. Uh, when you go and talk about butterflies to a human, uh, a grown individual, the first question is, OK, how can we make money out of butterfly rearing or nurturing? And I said, sorry, then probably you're not my section to cover or my target audience, because that's not what I'm teaching. Um, yeah. I've been going to schools and NGOs for about seven, eight years, and not even a single child has asked me that question. So my target audience is mainly children. Uh, I thought, you know, there are so many books available which talks about the life cycle of a butterfly. I wanted to really write something which talks about other terms um, like mud puddling, like, um, you know, how which plants can they actually grow and why they need a butterfly garden. Um, how about their defense mechanism? So everybody knows butterflies can't really bite. How do they really uh, save themselves? So these all uh, things that I had to really spend a lot of time researching. I thought I'll put a handy book, which is which talks more, just not the butterfly life cycle, but something more about it. And that's how I came with an idea to write a book. Um, I'm very lucky that WWF India uh, accepted my request to really collaborate with me. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah. Amazing. So they really helped me with some technical uh, research and terminology that probably I wasn't well versed with. And we included a lot of illustrations here. For example, this one talks about the molting process. That means how one caterpillar changes into the second instar. That means it sheds the skin to uh, grow in size. So we've included a lot of your terminologies and we've talked a little more in detail about the species, the various um, types and classification of butterflies. It's very well illustrated. And this is one attempt to really introduce children to more about, to know more about butterflies in detail. Amazing. Okay, so when we talk about butterflies, of course, uh, they've got vibrant colors and then those uh, nice patterns what is this there a reason behind that that every butterfly has got something different on it yeah uh so you know your few of the butterflies are very bright in color uh rather in nature generally we say that uh, anything which is bright colored is toxic it has poison not poison but toxic uh, in nature it's mainly to really scare the other um, predators maybe a bird lizard to warn them and tell them that I have toxins inside, please don't eat oh. me. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's one reason. Uh, also, you'll see the male butterflies are more uh, vibrant in color to attract the female. That's the other reason. Um, especially in butterflies I've seen, for example, there's a species called Danaid uh, egg fly. It, uh, is, the male is actually black in color. The female is bright orange in color. Uh, now, what it does it is it mimics another species of butterfly, which is poisonous. Now, though Danaid is not poisonous, uh, not does not have toxins, it will mimic a toxic butterfly. 
so the bird will think okay this is a plain tiger and i eaten a plain tiger before which was toxic i better stay away and wow. yeah so um, that we you know that's how they use the color to really um, confuse the predators and save themselves um and one more interesting fact that i really uh, learned there are few butterflies which have um big circular eye spots on them big in size and if you see them from distance it looks like a big animal so oh. it looks like the eyes of big animals so it's also to really confuse the predators to say that i am not a butterfly i'm like big mammal you Uh, can't really, uh, you know, eat me up. Rather, I will attack you. Sounds so very cute, are... I must say. <laughs> yeah, very cute. <laughs> Intelligence as well as cute. Yeah, absolutely. So these are um, why they have different patterns and colors, um, and that's how they use them. Yeah. Lovely, lovely. So much to learn. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So during the lockdown, now, uh, uh, you know, we observed that nature started healing itself. Uh, meal guy of the Asian antelope, we we say we call it right. I mean, that was seen on the streets of Noida. Then there was a huge flock of flamingos migrating to Mumbai, <laughs> right? Uh, so I'm sure you know you must have observed like a conservationist. You must have observed, uh, you know, these the nature healing itself in your garden as well. Did you notice any of that? Yeah. So to be very honest, Mansi, I saw my garden through a different lens in lockdown. Uh, though i was already spending a lot of time here um, every weekend i used to spend observing my garden but always i used to prefer to go out in different uh, for example sundar nursery lodi garden to look for more species i thought in my garden i can see few but not many uh, but i started spending more and more time here and i saw species like uh, there's one species called tony coaster which is not easily seen I saw that for the first time in my garden. So not that probably it flew to my garden. Butterflies were always flying around, un, uh, unlike Nilgai and other things. Uh, my gardener wasn't visiting us, so he wasn't plucking out all the weeds available. Yes. Yes. And butterflies, a lot of species, needs weeds to grow on. Oh, so, wow. yeah. So our garden was a little messy. but mm -hmm. i could see more butterflies i could see more insect visiting us because the weeds were not there so i think that's one good thing that happened and of course i saw a lot of not just me there were a lot of people in my colony who wanted to now all of a sudden have their balcony gardens or terrace garden and they had time they had more time to really spend um, or you know have a place for uh, their own greener place for them right. that's when they started contacting me and said that we can't also go to um, a nursery we need to add more plants that's when what i did all the seeds that i had i uh, you know sowed them made uh, plants and i distributed free of cost to them wow yeah wow. so we planted good about 40 50 plants and we gave away and i think that's become a culture now even last year i did that and this year also i plan to do it lucky neighbors now <laughs> i'm going to move to fajabad any <laughs> any time mansi you can come to my place and you know not just that mansi um, they uh, what they said that we'll give you those curd ka dabbas you know the used curd uh, dabbas that you get plastic ones they started on oh my colony people they started saving it cleaned it and gave it to my uh, to me to say you can plant uh, those saplings in this and then give it away you don't really have to even spend 2 rupees on buying those uh, grow uh, growing um, uh, packs and all you use them so that's the kind of support people gave me and at zero cost i can really plant them and give it uh, free of cost to them so yeah. now you are developing a whole ecosystem of butterflies out there Isn't yeah, it? I'm trying to. I'm trying to. So I convinced my uh, management to really have a small butterfly garden uh, in the park that we have, and everybody contributed, and we've converted one section to be a butterfly garden uh, in our colony. We've done that. Lovely. All right. So how do you strike that fine balance between being a passionate, uh, you know, uh, uh, butterfly keeper, uh, I'd say, and uh, somebody who is also a dedicated professional? in your uh, in eny right ey yes yeah 
yeah so well my job is actually a little challenging um it, it consumes a lot of time of mine um but you know i make sure i tell myself that weekends is probably when i dedicate myself to work every weekend i wake up and spend some time in my garden it could just be 10 minutes not more than that maybe a uh, weekend is when i dedicate myself and spend a lot of time reading visiting traveling and learning more and more um i think even especially in lockdown mansi even the corporates realize that you have to have a passion that's how you keep your employees sane and that's when we even uh, with evi they came up with hobby clubs and you know we did have hobby class of photography nature and a lot more and that's when they started realizing um, that as an employee you may make them work 24/7 but they need to have a hobby of their own and that's when they you know they started recognizing people um um that's also how i got some little more time during my weekdays because they acknowledged the fact and other than all that i think um, it's definitely very tiring especially when i have to go and visit the school um i take the morning assembly time which is like i have to read the school by 7:30 am or 8 o'clock uh, i reach there complete complete my one hour of um, session or lecture or work workshop with them and then i resume back to office spend a little extend a little one hour at night because to just to compensate so it's definitely very hectic uh, hectic but i think people like you mansi you make us realize that we're doing a good job and we're more enthusiastic to do more and more wow uh, that's a lovely message i'd say and uh, i mean beautiful it's very inspiring very inspiring indeed so yes i mean uh, again i'm going to spread the word how how did it all start and how did you convince your parents uh, you you mentioned that your mother uh, now helps you out with this so uh, parents are you know this is something off beat and parents wouldn't really be very cool about it uh, initially or any such other fashion that we have like i have seven dogs and oh, wow. it was very difficult yes to convince my parents they had a dedicated 2 bhk to themselves <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> parents do have a lot of problem uh, with their children keeping pets and uh, you know taking care of them becomes a little cumbersome how did you convince your parents i think initially you know as a kid um, i started i was always very inclined towards nature so all the garden that you see you might think that i've spent a lot of time putting them in place but that's done by my parents because they've always loved gardening wow. so i think it was a common interest that we all had that made it easy uh, the second thing is that you know when i started inviting kids to my home and they started appreciating and at the same time they mentioned one line one statement to say oh we never knew this i think that was an eye opener for me and for them too that probably we doing something to add on some value or knowledge to somebody and when i started going to schools um i think that's when they had a little disconnect because you know i was stretching i was probably not having a proper sleep because i was always on my toes be it a weekday or a weekend that's where they we had a, a little disconnect but i made them believe that if i stay at home and not talk about butterflies even for one day it makes me really sad and i don't have that energy at all so i had to tell them that you know the energy the passion that i get is only through my hobby and if i just let it go probably i may not be making that huge a difference that i stop doing and the world will not probably move but as an individual i think even though it doesn't get me money it doesn't earn uh, make help me uh, have a living but i think for my mental peace this is something that i really want to do and probably this is my ikigai which where i push myself to bed and i'm very happy as a person so i think they resonated to my thoughts and um, i think th they are really happy with whatever i do lovely it fetches you a lot of contentment i see and that smile sells it all yes <laughs> yeah uh what have been your greatest achievements i see that you're a limca book uh, record holder right limca book yeah. record uh, yeah. please tell us about that too Uh, so I won Limca Book Record for two consecutive years. That was uh, 2020 and 2021. It's uh, given to me for nurturing the maximum butterflies in India. Uh, 
Well, to be very honest, Mansi, uh, it did give me a lot of recognition. Um, a lot of people wanted to work with me. A lot of schools wanted to inv invite me because, you know, it's really fancy to say, okay, we have a Limca book record holder with us. But, you know, that was never an idea. I didn't really want a lot of publicity through the uh, award as such. But yes, it did give me a lot of recognition to say that whatever I do, I probably know my work. And, uh, um, you know, I think it has been, a, it was a very proud moment when they actually sent that certificate to me, uh, announcing me as the record holder. But probably it helped me to really tell my co-workers at work that, okay, see, I have been recognized and I should do something around it. Um, right. It gave me a recognition at home to say that, you know, um, maybe monetary wise, I may never be recognized, but... Uh, probably even they believe that I do something different and I should continue. And I think the most important is to tell my own self when I wake up and say that probably I'm creating this much of difference and I should continue and people want me to do that. I think all this thing, I think uh, Limka uh, book record helped me gain and it was reaffirmation to really tell me that I'm probably, uh, if not doing the best thing in the world, then I'm not doing a bad job as well. I should continue doing what I'm doing. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, you had a purpose beyond just getting that tag of a Limca book record holder. All right. And you were also developing a butterfly park, right, in Faridabad. Uh, what's, yeah. what's it like? I mean, uh, how soon can we expect a beautiful park to visit? Yeah. So basically, we did one for our residential colony. We've done that. Uh, we did one for Lalit Hotel in Faridabad. We created one balcony for them as the butterfly garden. Um, you know, uh, and the idea was to really introduce, uh, have events like breakfast with butterfly, where we can have food in the hotel and also introduce them to butterfly. Well, uh, we made very small section, but then lockdown happens. So I'll have to revisit and see where are we on that. You know, the idea is, Mansi, not to really have or, you know, um, uh, in India, you can't really have a zoo. You can't cover them. It has to be like a plain garden, butterflies fluttering around. I did one for uh, Noida Sector 16. There's this army colony that we, uh, uh, you know, discuss which plants to add. My idea is to really have a every garden should be a butterfly garden. So I want more and pe more people to contact me so that I can tell them here you can plant this kind of uh, host plants or nectar. And you can confer every garden, every normal park can be a butterfly park. You don't need any fancy stuff or you need not cover a, uh, a garden. So I want, I've developed three, but I want every garden, every person to contact me so that I can counsel them. And at zero cost, can they convert a normal garden to a butterfly garden? So not just one Mansi, probably the idea is when you visit a park in your garden, you say, oh yeah, even my garden is a butterfly garden. And that's the thought behind it. Lovely, lovely. All right, all right. So now uh, coming to the end, but definitely, you know, it's the beginning of the journey, I'd say. Um, what kind of uh, workshops or uh, activities or initiatives are you involved with to get my, uh, in our viewers? be able to know and join you in that particular that's initiative. Great. That's great, yeah. So Mansi, recently I do this uh, workshop with schools every now and then. Uh, right now it's virtual. So I have a collaboration with one organization which is called Speaker of the Year. Uh, they collaborate with 100 schools in Delhi that I visit them. So if you're part of, if any of the students are part of that school, they would have met me, seen me and worked with me. The other thing that I do is the seed balls that I showed you. So I do workshops uh, for making for seed ball making and all. Uh, then uh, more than that is, for example, I do a lot of butterfly walks because of COVID it didn't happen. But I take people around their colonies, their parks and no fancy parks I'm talking about to show them how you can identify butterflies. Uh, how can you create an environment to have more and more of them? And all the people complaining that when we were kids, we used to have butterflies. Now, no longer we see them. No, that's not true. Right. Probably, probably you've been in your house. You spend more time on technology. So I take them to their gardens and show them which butterflies are available. So it's wow. basically, yeah, butterfly walks. It could be seed ball workshop. It could be, um, you know, meeting people at school. 
all these initiatives and i don't really uh, i you know do this for individuals i do this for schools so whoever wants to collaborate are free to contact me um i don't really charge anything for uh, any of these projects but i love and so much enjoy to do more and more initiatives like this yeah amazing amazing so definitely this is all gone down on my bucket bucket list i'd tell you <laughs> and i'm definitely going to contact you to join you in all your initiatives i'm 100% up for this and that's how you know i got so interested when i learned about you i was like i was trying to track you down <laughs> and get you here uh, because uh, you know we are growing this into a beautiful platform uh, for people who are seeking knowledge Yeah, so thank you so much, uh, Prachi, for joining us today. And uh, very soon we'll be sharing uh, the clip of this one with you. And uh, and you. we are writing, going to be writing an article also. Thank you so much, Prachi. Thank you so much. Can't thank you enough. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Mansi. It was my pleasure. And you know the kind of time you spend with me. Usually, uh, the interviews that I've been part of are very rapid. Like they just want two, three information and tick in the box kind of thing. But we, this was very elaborate uh, and very informative. Thank you so much. I had to dedicate that much of time, and it's <laughs> all totally for a cause and so deserving. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, signing off now. Thank you. Bye bye.